Hello and welcome back to Lord Fenton Gaming Plays Neverwinter Nights 2 Complete. I'm your host, Lord Fenton. In this Neverwinter Nights 2 build video, we're doing the Flash Blade build. This is a Swashbuckler, Duelist, and yes, Weapon Master build all rolled into one. As always, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more Neverwinter Night 2 builds and videos just like this. Here are the pros and cons of this build. Your attack damage will be really up there. Your uh, rolls for uh, critical hits will be extremely good. Yeah, 13 through 20 is a very good one with a certain uh, weapon. Another thing good is AC. You get to use light armor until you get to a duelist. Then you use no armor at all or cloth armor. You have a nice advantage uh, there. Uh, another thing is since uh, you're going to be using cloth, yeah, that armor cost is going to be uh, down big time. You get to focus on giving heavy armor to your party members. You get to craft your weapons and armor, your own mundane ones, which is nice. Uh, another good thing I'm going to go ahead and say is your tumble will be really up there. That's your main focus of the build is the tumble skill too. Now, disadvantages goes, you can be a little bit squishy up front until things seriously start to get the ball rolling. You have to use one weapon in hand, can't use any shields. If you use any shields or any armor heavier than leather, then later on anything heavier than cloth, you're screwed. Uh, that's about it for advantages and disadvantages of this uh, build. Let's talk about races. Let's uh, do uh, go over the dwarfs first. Gold dwarf, I'm going to say pass because negative two dexterity is uh, pretty bad, so you don't want that. So I definitely say avoid that race at all costs. Gray dwarfs are actually good, even though you'll level up slower. You get that nice constitution. So if you want to go for a dwarf, this is a one of the two, I suggest. Shield dwarfs are good too. Again, mine's two charisma. Forget it. You don't want it. You don't have to worry about that for these uh, dexterity and intelligence. Let's go over the elf race. Drought. This is one of the best elf race I feel like for this uh, build. If you're going the elven route, plus two dexterity and plus two intelligence. That is like. You really want that badly for a uh, swashbuckler slash duelist build and with uh, across weapon master moon elf is pretty good You get the uh, good half, which is also dexterity. You don't get the intelligence, but still it's good Sun elf plus two intelligence you get that that is pretty good. You miss out on the dexterity downside is the uh, constitution Now uh, let's go over the next uh, elven race, which is wild elf I'm gonna probably say minus two intelligence plus two dex. I'm gonna say a pass on that because the intelligence yeah, you'll be a disadvantage. Wood Elves definitely a pass. You get minus two constitution and intelligence. You get the plus two dexterity and plus two strength. That's nice, but it costs the intelligence. Now let's talk about the gnome race. Deep gnome, I'm gonna say it's okay, but out of the two gnome races, I'm gonna probably say it's pass on it. Yeah, there's too much penalties there. Rock gnomes, yeah, it's uh, good if you wanna go that route, but it's minus two uh, strength. Halflings, this one's better than the gnomes. Also halflings and gnomes, uh, certain weapons will you have to carry with two hands. That's not good. So it's like for example knives and uh, Short swords you have to carry one hand so your weapon uh, will be limited, but still it's a uh, plus two dexterity is good minus two strength on both Now the strong heart one has extra feet, which is fine. So let's go over the uh, Half el I should say half elf and half drow race No stat I should say ability score bonuses at all But still if you want none of that nonsense, it's a good race to uh, pick Half orc, I'm gonna probably say is pass. You know, plus two strength is nice, but minus two intelligence is a deal breaker. Now, humans, no uh, ability score uh, ups or downs. However, they gain one extra feat and four skill points when you start out. So that's like a nice uh, bonus. You have to make up in other uh, fields for uh, stats, though. Now, plain touch, there are some good ones. Asimar, uh, they're more for paladin builds, so I would probably say is if you like that race, go for it. If not, pass. Tieflings, this is actually a great race. My two charisma, forget, I mean, forget about that nonsense, but plus two dex and plus two intelligence. That's perfect for this build. I'm going to tell you that now. You want to go for a tiefling? This race is one of them. Uh, now, next one is uh, Air Jinsai. Now, let me uh, go ahead and go over the stats for uh, that. I, I'm going to say it's probably one of the best ones. Plus two dex and intelligence. That's really good. It'll cost you uh, minus two on wisdom and uh, charisma. But that's all right. Now let's uh, do the earth one. Now that's plus two strength and constitution. It's more like for a warrior build. So I'll probably say a pass on it. Fire Jinsai. It's a good one, just plus two intelligence. You won't get the air uh, one advantages, but still, that's all right. Now this one's all right for tanking. Plus two constitution, minus two charisma, but still out of the four elemental ones, the air one's the best. 
Yanti Pure Blood. I feel like this is the best one. Not only you get plus two dexterity and plus two intelligence, you get blind fighting. Yeah, at level one. This is a good race for it. You, uh, your level adjustments uh, plus two, you'll level slower, but hey, it's a real good race. Now, Grey Orc, I'm going to probably say pass to the fact that it's minus two intelligence. So, I'm going to say, what's your advice? I'm going to say a Drow, a Tiefling, Air Jinsai, or Yanti Pure Blood. Those are the four uh, races I would suggest to uh, pick. I'll pick the Yanti Pure Blood because I like that uh, blind fighting. That's a good advantage there. So, let's go over the uh, classes uh, next. Now, for our uh, classes, it's not that hard. Swashbuckler, you're going to get up to seven. We're going to get uh, mobility. Yeah, so we're going to need mobility, dodge, and of course, uh, weapon finesse. So we're going to get weapon finesse, we're going to get dodge right away. The uh, reason for those three feats is uh, duelist. You're going to need five points in parry, we'll get that down the line too. We're going to get tumble, that's our main focus. So, we're going to do uh, duelist for ten levels. All ten levels, we're going to do straight up. After we get some more uh, feats and skills, we will get Weapon Master. So we'll get all the feats for the Weapon Master at this point. Five points of Intimidate to uh, lock it in. We're only going to do seven levels for Weapon Master because the uh, best feat is at seven for them. After that, we'll go back to Swashbuckler to finish things off. So that's it about for uh, uh, rate, uh, classes alignment. Pick any. Don't want to be smited. Pick uh, Lawful Neutral, Neutral, or Chaotic Neutral. Now, as for a deity, just pick any deity you like. I'm just going to go ahead and pick a good one. I like uh, the one that has to deal with uh, money. There's other good ones, too. Now, if I was evil, mask all the way for because of this uh, build. Or uh, Umberly, the uh, queen of the seas. Yeah, I'm saying it. Ability scores. Strength at, I'm going to go ahead and put that at 14. Dexterity, I'm going to just even think it out. So, strength at 14, that's good enough. I'll use items to boost that up. Uh, let's see here. Constitution at 12. We'll leave it there. Um, intelligence, since I'm picking Yanti Pure Blood. And uh, Dexterity will be at 18. We're going to focus on intelligence for the uh, first two levels of 4, which is 4 and 8, to get intelligence to 20. Dexterity, we're going to get that to 24 after. We're going to use a, one of the feats to uh, do that. So, in final, Strength 14, Dexterity, Intelligence 18, Constitution 12, and Wisdom and Charisma 10. Uh, that's about it. So we'll go to the next one. It's our background. And that one's a little bit optional. So here we go. Now, backgrounds, if you don't want any problems, pick no background. Me. I believe I picked one. The other one's just for a nice uh, challenge. So it's up to you all on uh, that. I believe I uh, picked something else. I think it was appraiser. I uh, went for uh, that. So this is why I get some advantages uh, too. Now, let's go over uh, skills. Skills, very important. Tumble's number one. That's going to get to four. Appraise, we're going to get to two. Uh, I'll probably say one or two. Craft armor, craft weapons, and diplomacy. We'll get the four. Diplomacy seems optional. If you want like that, get bluff. That's another good one, too. Lore's nice to get. Easier for us to identify items. So I put appraisal at one. Tumble at four, as I mentioned. Repeating it again. Use magical device and spellcraft at one. We'll get a parry, or parry, how, they, how you pronounce it, to four. We'll get that to 5 to the next level, and then we'll get Intimidate eventually uh, down the line, of course, to 5. So will take care of the Duelist and the Weapon Master skill uh, requirements. So that's about it there. So I put another point in Spellcraft. Wait, no, I'm going to take that away. We'll put that in Intimidate. We'll start a little bit on that. So Intimidate at 1, Parry at 4. Let's see here. Uh, praise, use Magical Device and Spellcraft at 1. Craft Weapons and Armor, Diplomacy, and Tumble at 4. With this build, we'll definitely catch those up easily. Now, as for feats, we're going to pick one. Dodge. But I'm going to go over each one, I feel like. Blind Fight. So, with this uh, feat, you get for free because this uh, race characters gets a reroll. If it misses against invisible enemies and such. And also, furthermore, invisible creatures get no bonus against you. So, because I pick a Auntie Pure Blood, that's free. Otherwise, I have to go down the line. Weapon finesse instead of uh, strength bone, uh, your strength, it'll be your dexterity as you modify when you attack. It only works on certain certain weapons. For this build, we're going to use one of those weapons down there to pick. Uh, dodge just does is uh, uh, through a uh, condition and negates damage and such, which is good. Uh, alertness uh, gives me a plus two bonus on spot and listen checks. And since I am a Yanti Pure Blood, I get dark vision. So, what's my uh, final advice? It starts off a little slow, but once you get to a duelist, it picks up really nicely. 
So either uh, if you have a tank in your party, have them go in first, and you go in and attack. If you're if you're like the only like the tank, you're going first, but still make sure you're fully buff up. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, level up our character. So we're gonna go ahead and level up our uh, swashbuckler from level two to seven. So we're gonna go ahead and get some uh, requirements out of the way for the duelist. So swashbuckler. Craft armor, craft weapons, diplomacy, tumble. Those are four you want to do, and lore. I picked lore because I want to, you know, in case I identify and see uh, items I want to identify, it'd be easier for me to do that. I'm going to go ahead and put two more, uh, Put use my uh, cross class points for intimidate. We'll get that done. So par uh, parry or slash parry is out of the way. So that's five points in that. We're going to pick Swashbuckler, so we're going to still pick Craft Armor, Craft Weapons. Let's go ahead and do that. Diplomacy, Lore, and very important, Tumble. Yeah, we're maxing that out big time for this uh, build. So we're going to go ahead and put a point in Intimidate if we can. And then store the uh, points. So now we get ourselves a nice feat. Combat Expertise. Now, first in Insightful Strike, uh, it does this is a... Uh, Instead of, I think, uh, addition to your strength bonuses, your intelligence bonuses will also uh, go into your attacks. Which is a good thing. Now, this you lose if you're wearing medium, heavy, or you're uh, overweight in items. You're calling too much items. No, that bonus is gone. Combat expertise is a plus 3 AC, minus 3 attack rolls. However, that's just a gateway to other feats we need later on for Weapon Master. Uh, let's see, ability scores, intelligence, put that to 19. We're only going to get that to 20 to get that uh, done, and that's it. So now we're going to go ahead and use the usual suspects, craft weapons and armor, diplomacy, lore, uh, point and intimidate if we can. If not, we'll store it if we have to uh, tumble. And let's see here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a point into uh, spellcraft. That'll be uh, good enough for uh, now. Let's hit the next button. No feats, apologize for that. So let's uh, level up our swashbuckler once again. That is uh, craft weapons and armor, diplomacy, lore, and tumble. And we put another point in intimidate. I'm gonna go do is uh, try to get that to five, so it'll be on the safe side, so I don't have to worry about skills no more. And we I decided to put an extra point in spellcraft. That looks uh, pretty good, and that should definitely do it. Let me see if I can put a point into uh, lore. I almost forgot about that. Yeah, make sure everything your uh, uh, main skills are at eight at this uh, point. Swashbuckler dodge. So uh, what this does is, uh, let me see where's that at. Uh, Swashbuckler is trying to uh, focus her, his or her defense on a single opponent in melee. They gain one plus one dodge bonus to AC against melee attacks from current target or last target. Now this increases like uh, every uh, five levels or so. And th with this build, we're going to get Leasley plus two in that. So let's keep on leveling up this uh, Swashbuckler, shall we? And let's uh, go ahead and uh, hit that. Now, uh, skills, you know what to do, which is, uh, like I said before, craft armor, craft weapons, diplomacy, lore, and tumble. Yeah, tumble is your number one uh, focus. We're going to get three free AC when we get to tumble at 30. And I can't do uh, intimidate. That's all right. I'll uh, focus on uh, filling the holes, which is spellcraft. And, of course, if I can, use magical device or I'll, uh, yeah, I'll focus on those. That's good enough. Now, uh, next up, what we're going to get is a uh, weapon focus. Now, pick the weapon finesse weapon you want. If you're a smaller race, I'm going to say uh, crickles, daggers, or uh, short swords are good. I picked this weapon because I felt like it's the uh, best, and I like the uh, damage on it with weapons finesse. And uh, weapon focus, you get plus one attack with said weapon if you use it in battle, which I will definitely uh, with this uh, build. Now, we're going to do the, you know, the skills i mentioned including like i said before tumble most important now since it's at 10 we get one free ac it's not like neverwinter nights one where's every five points you get one free ac and neverwinter nights two they nerfed it down to uh every 10 points you get one free ac yeah tumble was uh pretty op in the original uh, game i put point in the lore and uh intimidate should uh be at five also so we got good for weapon master now we get mobility because of that we're uh Duelist. So mobility is a gateway. Uh, what this is, you gain a plus four dodge bonus against foes, which is uh, pretty good. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to the next class, which is Prestige Class Duelist. Now, because we have all the requirements, well, let's uh, go ahead and select the Duelist. 
and we got our first of uh, two prestige classes. So we got the skills, we got the feats, and we got the base attack bonus plus six. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, with this uh, duelist levels work towards the weapon master feats requirements. That's all we have left. So for 10 levels, you're going to be a duelist. Now, level 8, picked intelligence. That should be it for intelligence. So from here on out, from 12 and uh, to 30, you will have to get dexterity. Oh, believe me, you'll get some good dexterity points out of this. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, focus on craft armor. I mean, not craft armor, I mean craft weapons. I can't do diplomacy. I'm going to wait until I get a certain feat to uh, put some points in. I am going to focus on. But tumble is going to be the number one uh, reason we're going to go ahead and... Uh, Surge ahead on that. So I put some points in uh, craft weapon, spell craft, use macro device, and uh, tumble. And we hit next. We get uh, candy. Uh, was that dodge? Yeah. Let me make sure that is right. Let's see here. I'm trying to look for it. Uh, candy uh, defense. Sorry about that. When uh, not wearing a uh, shield, the duelist adds uh, intelligence bonus of uh, her uh, his or her uh, duelist levels to uh, his or her AC. So we get uh, as long as we don't use a shield at all, we don't use any of the, the uh, armor, I believe. Yeah, we get some nice uh, armor class bonus because of that. In other words, uh, we uh, we get to be able to survive longer on the front lines. This is what we want. We get insightful strike too, uh, uh, which is uh, intelligence. We'll get into our uh, roles also, which is uh, good. Since we have twenty intelligence, we get a nice uh, bonus in that. With dexterity, thanks to weapon finesse, that goes up even higher. So let's get duelist out of the way. We're gonna get craft weapon. Let's see what else. Tumble. Now let me uh, try to use magical device. Get some points into that. There we go. We got caught up. And spellcraft. We max that out for now. The uh, next one I'm going for is able learners list, where I can start catching up my. Uh, Skills that used to be class skills that became class class. There'll be one point in that instead of two I waste. And improve reaction. This is a, uh, like here, this is a, uh, it's like a haste spell. That's what it is. It's once per day. So uh, next up, let's uh, uh, go ahead and hot bar it. And uh, there we go. Now we'll level up the duelist once again. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and catch up with uh, craft armor, craft uh, weapons, get that max. Uh, diplomacy, lore, and of course, very important, tumble. Yeah, tumble is our uh, main focus. You always want to focus on that. Yeah, we suffer a little bit in diplomacy for our talking skills, but that's all right. We'll catch all that up. As for tumble, that is fine. I'm going to go ahead and put a point in use magical device. I can't put any spellcraft. I'm going to start catching up our praise. And there we go, enhanced mobility. So where is that at? Enhanced mobility when wearing no armor and not using a shield. The duelist gains an additional plus four AC against uh, attacks that opportunity provoked by movement. That's a good thing. So we get extra AC bonus when we move around. Now let's uh, go ahead and get our duelist up there. Craft weapons, craft armor, diplomacy, lore, and tumble. If you can uh, put any cross class skills, then uh, spellcraft and uh, use magical device if you can. And I'm going to go ahead and catch uh, praise, get that up there. This way I save some uh, discounts. Now we get grace. This is the du uh, duelist version of that. Uh, at level four, duelist gain additional uh, plus two confidence bonus, uh, which is uh, to all reflex saves. That stacks with the other grace for uh, Swashbuckler. So our reflex saves will be really up there. So if we accidentally step in a trap that's reflex, we get to dodge that more often than not. So put your points in dexterity for your ability score since it's level 12. So we're going to get uh, craft weapons, armor, diplomacy, lore, tumble. If we can, uh, any cross class skills I need to do. I'm going to go ahead and store this some uh, for now. Now uh, this is very important. We're going to go ahead and uh, get his uh, spring attack. This is a gateway to whirlwind, which is uh, if we get uh, that, then it's a gateway to the weapon master. So we're finishing up the feats. For, uh, uh, precise strike uh, with this is uh, if you use a light or a one-handed uh, piercing weapon they gain 1d6 plus damage now if we're uh, wearing ar armor yeah that bonus is gone if we lose the weapon that's gone too spring attack this does is uh, we do not get any more uh, opportunities to attack when we move around 
So that's a good thing. So let's uh, get the duelist and I'll level that up some more. Yeah, we're getting that to 10. So uh, there we go. Let's uh, go ahead and do a praise. Craft weapons, craft armor, diplomacy, lore. Definitely tell them that's number one. Uh, use magical device if I can. Yep, yeah, and also uh, spellcraft. 10 points in spellcraft. We get saves versus spell bonus plus one. And that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and start putting a few points in the spot. So this is why I spot anything out of the ordinary. That's very important for uh, me. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, do this. Check everything out. There we go. Flourish. So we uh, get that now. Let's uh, go ahead and uh, get down to flourish. Now what? Uh, let's put the hot part. Now what flourish does is is uh, you you get one, uh, two d6 of uh, piercing damage with said weapon against an opponent. This cools down for 30 seconds. This is a great if you want to go against a uh, tough opponent. Now, uh, one thing is, is uh, you, that stacks, uh, you can use that against undead. You won't get the critical hits, but still, it's nice to have. So, uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, put, of course, the uh, usual suspects. Ash for Flourish, uh, yeah. That works against uh, folks that does, uh, you know, know, who are immune to critical hits. You just get a little bit extra attack bonuses. Now, uh, elaborate uh, parry. Now, this skill, I should say, this feat here. Where is it at? Sorry about that. I'm trying to find it. Uh, there we go. At level 7, Duelist adds her uh, class level to the uh, skill, which is the uh, Pari skill. Yeah, that skill gets a nice uh, bonus on that. More points than that, that's better it is. For those of you who like the skill, that's fine. Me, no, nah, I got other uh, investments and uh, other skills. That's much better, I feel. Usual suspects, if you can, on your uh, cross class skills and spot, do so. Let me go ahead and put some points into that. That should be good enough. So now we get ourselves another feat. World, uh, whirlwind attack. That's important. You must make sure you want to get it. This will give us, of course, now access. You guess it's a weapon master. So one full attack. You get to swing around. Any foes who are in your range will take normal damage. Not bad to have. So let's uh, go ahead and I'm just hot bar it. I'm just using this as my... Uh, Annoying enemies, so we've got two more levels in Duelist, and we get to become a Weapon Master. Put your points in Dexterity, so by now level 16, Derek's Dexterity should be exactly at 20. Uh, don't worry, we'll even that uh, number up once we uh, do finish this uh, build for Dexterity. So put your uh, points in the skills you want. We're getting close to Tumble at 20, that means we get two free armor class total. So let's uh, do it. Deflect Arrows, so that basically does is your first attack against ranged weapons. You get to deflect that. That's like one attack each round. So, for example, uh, if they attack three, uh, I should say three attacks one round, the first attack you deflect. Like, for example, annoying a uh, halfling slinger, uh, of course, uses a uh, sling against you. Yeah, their first attack uh, is gone, but the other two you could get hit. Still, it's great to have for a uh, duelist, and you get it free, though, just like a monk. So, one more level of the duelist, then we'll uh, go to Weapon Master. So, let's go ahead and select that. Let's see here. Uh, craft Armor, Craft Weapons, Diplomacy, Lore, Tumble. And uh, if we can, use Magical Device, Spellcraft, and Appraise. So, now we get, of course, 10 points in Spellcraft. Uh, uh, pl one, plus one save against spells. And again, sorry, no uh, feats. We're about to go into the world of the Weapon Master, the final prestige class for this uh, build. We're doing it only for seven levels, so craft weapons and armor, diplomacy, lore, and definitely tumble. If you can, uh, use your cross-class skills. If not, I put in a spot. You don't like spot. Some people put in a uh, parry or uh, something else. So let's uh, go ahead next. So we get two things. Now uh, this uh, feat here, uh, what it does is once per uh, day, use this uh, ability, I should say feat on a foe. It does max damage. And you get uh, more per your level. So you get seven those if you're uh, levels, I should say, uh, level seven weapon master. As for the uh, weapon of choice, that's just for your feats uh, along the uh, weapon master line. So let's go ahead and do power attack. So we uh, get plus three bonus to damage. However, it costs us uh, attack rolls. So in other words, uh, we'll miss more often than not. However, when we connect, we do a little bit more damage. And it's a gateway to uh, some feats I'm about to uh, get to. So uh, let me uh, go ahead and uh, see... Uh, put this over here. So, because uh, weapon, we're le weapon master level one, we only get one use uh, per day. On that, so weapon master, we'll pick that again. 
uh, your usual suspects and your skills, your cross class if you can. Put some points into it. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, focus on that. And there we go. I'm going to go ahead and uh, probably say I'm probably going to store that. Eventually I'll max out spot. Sorry, no feats. Uh, weapon masters are like that. So let's uh, get the weapon master some more. Since we're at level 20, dexterity. Put your points in dexterity from here on out. We'll uh, get out the uh, odd numbers for dexterity because I'm going to pick a feat later on. Skills, same thing as before. We'll select those. And uh, there we go. Sorry, no cost class. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a point or so into a spot. That should probably be uh, good enough uh, there. No feats. Now we're in the epic levels. Yep, that's right. We're epic characters now. Uh, usual suspects, especially uh, tumble. Your cross class skills, which is, uh, of course, spellcraft. Use magical devices, etc. I pick use magical devices because I'm going to use some robes with this uh, build. It gives me some AC. Now, uh, Cleave, it does is uh, when you kill a foe, your next attack hits a foe, it, whether it kills them or not, it stops right there. This is a gateway to Great Cleave. And it just tells us, yeah, we're, uh, of course, uh, I should say it's uh, epic characters, that other feat. Now we're level up again. Uh, let's see here. You put your skills there. And let's put that there. I'm going to go ahead and put some points in the spot. And there we go. We get two things now are good. Superior weapon focuses. So what this does is it gives us plus one attack damage to all of our uh, attacks. So if we have four uh, attacks per round, there'll be a plus one added to it now. Which is good. Yes, it's a plus one all bonus to all attack rolls with our weapon of choice. So we're using a good weapon. Now the next one I feel like is really good is increased multiplier. So for instance, our uh, weapon here is times two because what this feat is now times three. So when we get a critical hit, it's no longer times two. So we get, of course, uh, we get a, a critical hit of 10. Instead of two, it's be three, which is 30 damage. Just for example. So let's uh, level up our uh, skills. Yep, and uh, let's uh, get the usual suspects. Tumble, very important. We're closing in another free AC from our, for our tumble. That's why I have the uh, able learners. This way I could get that maxed out. Great cleave. This is like a kill streak. So you kill one foe, next foe, you uh, kill, then you go up to another foe until you, a you miss or you don't kill the next foe. You keep on going and going. It's great against very weak enemies or swarms of uh, foes you can kill with ease. Now uh, we'll level up again at level 24. Dexterity. We'll put points into that. Hit next. Uh, your uh, usual suspects. If you can't do cross class, that's fine. If not, I'm going to put in, a, for instance, a spot if I can. Let me hit next. Uh, now, uh, this one is uh, very nice. Where is it? Uh, this uh, critical one. It adds uh, minus two to uh, threat range. I say plus two to threat range. So, for uh, instance, our uh, threat range on a weapon was uh, previously, uh, for example, 18 through uh, 20. Now it's 16 through uh, 20. And it does stack with improved critical hits on uh, said weapons. So now we're back at the swashbuckler. So let's level that up. We're going to do it from 8 to 13 from here on out. So put your uh, skills as you uh, need to put. Any cross class ones definitely uh, do so. Let's uh, go ahead and do that. There we have it. And now we're going to get back some more points. So we're going to start getting a spot. So this is going to be very easy for us to uh, do. We're almost at the uh, cross class. Uh, I should say I call it a uh, cap. Now uh, we get ourselves a free feat. So let's do uh, improved critical on our uh, weapon of choice. Now improved flanking does instead of a uh, plus two bonus, we get plus four if we're attacking a foe from behind or on the side. Now improved uh, critical it does is uh, it drops your threat range. So for example, we have a uh, 18 through uh, 20. Now that uh, I should say, yeah, now that drops down to I should say. Uh, 16 through 20, now that drops down to, uh, you guessed it, 13 through 20. This, like I said, for uh, stacks with uh, some of the uh, the, uh, the uh, Kai uh, critical one. So let's uh, level up some more. Usual suspects for the skills. And there we go. Let's uh, keep at it and keep on going. We'll put some points in the spot. And there, sorry, no feats. So let's uh, level up our uh, swashbuckler. So we're back at the swashbuckler. If I didn't mention it before or just use my timestamps for that so now we're uh, one point away from maxing out the cross-class skills so now we have a uh, 30 and tumble that means we have a total of three free AC points which is uh good 
So uh, we get ourselves another uh, Swashbuckler Dodge. So that's another armor class there. I'm putting a Great Dexterity. You're asking, why is that, Fenton? Well, that is uh, very, very simple. I want to even things out so I get a nice bonus. And we'll have 24 Dexterity. Unbuffed. That's what I want. So now we'll level up again. So this is the final time you get ability score points. So let's pick Swashbuckler. And we're going to put a point in Dexterity. We should have 24 Dexterity with this uh, race. If you're not, if you don't have it, then uh, sell for 22. That's uh, fine. But 24 I have it with this race. It's good enough. So I'm going to go ahead and put the usual suspects for skills. And now we get luck of heroes. So we get plus uh, one to all save throws. And we get plus one armor class. That's normally a uh, level one feat. You can only get, of course, at level one. But because we have a, uh, you guessed it, a swashbuckler. We get that now uh, at level 11. So let's level it up. Swashbuckler once again. Uh, skills. So from this point on, you can't do any more cross-class skills. That's at 16. Put your points into your, of course, uh, class skills. And that should uh, do it. Now I'm going to go ahead and pick toughness. You're asking why is that? Well, we're going to get some more hit points. We get about, uh, I think it's one hit point uh, per level. And that's retroactive. In other words, uh, we get extra hit points uh, when we uh, do get this feat. See, there we go. We got a lot more hit points we need. So we'll level up one more uh, time, and that should uh, do it. Any uh, skills points you need to uh, put into to do it now, because this is it here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do tumble, diplomacy, lore, craft weapons and armor, and max out spot to 33. And there's unfortunately, I don't think there's any feats. So let me uh, make sure everything's right. There we go. Oh, yeah, we get acrobatic skills uh, proficiency. Now, let me uh, make sure I get that down there. Where is that at? Should be somewhere uh, here. Let me give a layover that I should go over it. Now, this does is uh, it makes sure you cannot ever uh, roll uh, five or uh, less for uh, when you get your tumble checks. It improves your tumble. It's a great thing. Now, that's about it for this build from level 1 to 30. Now, for the next part of this build video, we're going to go over the uh, equipment and, of course, stats f that you need to go for. I need to tell everybody something that's very important. In Neverwinter Nights 2, for instance, if you're going for uh, Dexterity plus 10 on items, it has to be uh, plus 10, the actual number. You cannot do an 8 and a uh, plus 2 just to get to 10, because if you uh, do, you only get to an 8. Now, as for attributes... You want is dexterity intelligence. That's very important to uh, do. If you want to strength and constitution is fine. If you need any uh, save throws, go ahead and definitely get that will save up there. You have very high reflex saves. Now, if you get any immunities, that's fine. Uh, haste is uh, good to uh, get. If you keen your weapon, that's fine. If you find any trucy items, that's good. Now, as for uh, buffs, you're going to have to use potions or party members uh, buffs since you don't have a buff yourself except for the one that's like a haste like ability. Uh, make sure you plus five your weapon. That's very important. Yeah, make sure your weapon is uh, part of the weapon finesse. Uh, that's there, and it's one-handed. Otherwise, yeah, you're not going to benefit from this uh, build for that. That's about it for uh, gear and, of course, stat advice. Next portion is the combat. First of all, let's go over uh, foes we could critical hit against. That's always buff up. Here we're using potions or your party member's buffs. So let's uh, go ahead and see what foes we're going to face. I think I did orcs last time. Yeah, let's do lizard folks. So these are like foes you can critical hit against. We're going to go ahead and uh, demonstrate flourish. And we're going to get a lot of hits with that. So because we could do critical hits, we get a lot more critical hits with our cleave. Any foes that surrounds us gets uh, destroyed. Any, of course, foes with less hit points gets annihilated, especially casters that decide unwisely go close against us, as you see before you. There you go, uh, we wrecked some foes with ease, that was quick. Now, you're asking, what about foes that are immune to critical hits? Well, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that now. It is uh, basically the uh, same strategy with the differences. Uh, you want to definitely save your uh, your strike, the one that's seven times a day. And if you uh, want to, use your flourish against tough foes, like for example, liches. Try to go for the uh, casters first. They're annoying. Now, if you're in a party, for instance, have uh, your party members to, you know, dispel some protections on, say, a lich. So I'm going to try to do is use Whirlwind also so I can surround skeletons, get skeletons who surround me so I can kill them. I'm not going to get the uh, super damage I was uh, getting with foes who are not immune to critical hits. 
But still, I'm doing enough damage so I can survive. And also, if you all notice, with my potions being uh, buffed, and also I have very high AC, thanks to the fact I chose my stats wisely. So, I could definitely uh, survive Lich attacks, Skeleton attacks, anything that are, uh, you know, immune to sneak attacks and critical hits. Liches are down, this uh, mummy is about to become dust. And there we go. That's how you uh, win the battles with uh, both uh, types, critical hits and non-critical hits. So, here's my final advice for this uh, build. You're going to start off slow until you become a duelist. Once you uh, do uh, become a duelist, things will really pick up nicely thanks to the feats and such. When you get to Weapon Master, oh yeah, your damage will go up big time. When you get back to the Swashbuckler and in the epic levels, you're going to tear everything apart. This is it for my Flash Play Swashbuckler Duelist Weapon Master build video. This is Lord Fenton signing off. Thanks for watching and have a great day or night and do please stay safe. Please subscribe to my channel for more guides, builds, and other videos from Neverwinter Nights too. If you like what you see, then pick my suggestion on the upper left hand corner or YouTube suggestion on the bottom left hand corner. Have a great day or night and do enjoy the view.